I want to talk about Shaq syndrome. Does anyone, does anyone, I, so I know who Shaq was. Shaq was one of my idols when I grew up. Mm. Loved him. I couldn't believe I said to a 15 year old basketball day, who's Shaq? And he's going, I said, so, so Shaq. And I've gone, who? Who? Yeah. And I like, I nearly died. I couldn't yeah. believe it. One of the WBL um, development squad players didn't know who Shaq was. And a couple of, yeah. Anyway, so Shaquille O'Neal, um, arguably the, if you think of talent in basketball as size, athleticism, length of limbs, I would say Shaq. Strength. All the things, yeah. Shaq's probably the biggest waste of talent in the history of the NBA that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, because yeah. he allowed himself to get fat. Like he got overweight. Sorry, Sorry. how it is. <laughs> Doesn't live in Australia, I'm fine. Um, and uh, he couldn't make foul shots. And that meant that his impact was... Like, he still had a good impact. He, he's, still, he's still called the most dominant ever, and he still was one of the most but, amazing centers of all time. But he should have been just... It should have been without question. There should have been Shaq and everyone else of the mortals. Yeah. But it was kind of like, oh yeah, he's in the mix with Maybe the top 50. Yeah. But no one's putting him in the top five, I reckon. Not many. Not many. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, I want to talk about Shaq syndrome, which is a thing that I uh, uh, talk to kids about a bit, and it's, it's something I've made up, but um, I think it's interesting to discuss. Um, so we see it all the time with super big kids. Who are... And it's quite a particular thing to basketball mm. in such a sport that's dominated by height, where how far you go in the sport is directly correlated with how many inches. Like in America, if you're between the age of 20 and 40 and you're over seven foot, there's like a 30% chance you're in the NBA. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> if you're seven foot... You're What's that from? Uh... Was, it, was it outliers or was it... No, it's one of oh, um, the sports gene. Sports gene, right there. Yeah, yeah okay. the sports gene. Uh, amazing book, but yeah, it's like, it's like oh, that's, right. a that's not just Jacob making up a stat. No, it's like yeah, it's twenty five thirty percent of all seven footers between that age bracket have in the NBA currently. It's ridiculous. Really it so Shaq was seven three, or yep. seven two ish. Go on. Um, and Shaq syndrome is the syndrome where you are so big and so talented and so sort of fated by every coach. Everyone wants you to play in their team, and they will do anything they can to have you on their team. Yeah. Uh, that basically you get this raw, you just get this kind of get carried through all of your junior career based on the length of your bones, just being big. It's yeah. a big unit, um, and and the, the, there are fundamental problems with your game that just get papered over because you can get away with it. Uh, you can just monster your way through everything. Can't shoot free throws, but yeah, but look at him block shots. Yeah. So, yeah. And and the reality is with with, with humans, um, adversity, uh, missing out on stuff. That's actually what makes us better, hungrier, tougher. Um, gives us lessons, yeah. Yeah, like the the, the classic is, is Michael Jordan being being cut uh, from the from varsity his, as a sophomore, yeah. Yeah, uh, and he went home and he was crying. He was upset because when no one knows, but when Michael Jordan was young, his brother Larry was actually was he better. He was the Jordan that everyone wanted. Who was a stud athlete, apparently, like yep. shorter, just baseball, but a basketball. It's like team. five ten, but ridiculous athlete, like full on dunks, like. And so Jordan was like, I gotta be better than Larry, gotta be better than Larry. And so that competitive and that, and that losing gave him the drive yep. to be better. And it made him the vicious, but hungry competitor. Let me hone in on that more though. Uh, so he goes home, he's missed the team, he's bawling his eyes out, and his mum grabs him and she says, You feel that pain, you use that pain, and you never let anyone do that to you again. Like she's like, Dah. Yeah. And, and and so it's good mumming. <laughs> like, <Lioness> mumming. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so, because that, because that, that's a sliding doors moment right there, where with different parenting, Michael Jordan might have been sulky and bitter. Or it might have been, oh, I can't believe the coach did that. You're so right, Michael. That's that's yeah, rubbish. you're better than them. Oh, it's just these biased blah blah. blah. Like she nailed that yeah. piece of, of mothering right there. Um, but so what Jordan got was he got the pain of denial, and people with Shaq syndrome have never experienced the pain of denial, and so they just go right through. So if Shaq had had a bit of that earlier on. He might have had to learn to shoot foul shots. He might have had, a, had to develop a work ethic, um, which he didn't have. He didn't, I'm not saying he had no work ethic, but it wasn't the finely tuned. Because Jordan had like an almost grudge level. Like, he was almost a bit too tuned. <laughs> His whole spoiler life was one vendetta against that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so Shaq Syndrome. So I think the, what we see with Shaq Syndrome is we see big kids who um, don't put... Enough, don't have to put enough work into the little things. It's the attention to detail that like, I think is a really big thing. Like they work hard and they go out and they shoot hoops, but it's really that fine tuning, right? Free throws, all right, 
learning the footwork of a post moves or learning or, how not to foul. Or just your preparation stuff, like it's really putting, it's not just turning up, it's putting high level point, I'm sorry to be the reverse heightest, but point guard level intensity. Yeah. Because your point guards, they're scrappy because they've got to fight, because there's so because point guards are diamond doesn't. They've got to fight the way everything's... Yeah, everyone under 6'2 is a point guard. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's just a, it's a different thing. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a thing that if you can, if you're a coach or if you're, if you're a parent... If you can see it and you're aware of it, yeah. I think, yeah, just, just thinking. And I'll tell our, our, our kids here, we've got no room for Shaq syndrome here. Like, I don't care that you're big and that people think you're going to be amazing. Um, if you do not work hard here, there's... That, it means nothing to me that you're, that you're great out there. Yeah. I think it's really important. And also the thing is... And because also, uh, with sport becoming so much more commercial mm-hmm. now, is because thanks to people like Shaq and Jordan, there are now lots of Shaqs around. There's more of them, yeah. There's, so you can't... I'm not... This is opening a whole can of worms, but I'm not saying Shaq would be useless in today's league, but there's a lot more guys with his level of athleticism who aren't making it. Well, he might have been better because he might have actually had to pull his finger out. He might have more competition. And so, to shoot. And, yeah. yeah, so, but, and I, coming from country, I saw a lot in country Vic, where mm. someone like Delhi is quite rare because all the other kids in the country program was like, oh, they're already in the state team. I'm at the top, and he was like, no, ball handle, ball handle, ball handle. Mm. So he was the exact opposite and allergic to that. So, I think... The issue that um, is really underappreciated with the Shaq syndrome is that athletes that then um, don't put that little bit of it, that extra bit of effort in, as a big, you actually need to work harder to stay healthy um, because the forces are greater. So your body weighs out. So Ber- Bernard uh, Tomic uh, said, said the classic. I'm si- I'm six five. Uh, I'll never be the fittest guy on the tour. I, don't, I think it was. I, don't, I think you're softening the paraphrase. I think it was. I'm six five. So I, it was more like I'm six five. So I can't get fit. No, it was uh, well, a little bit below. Yeah, I feel like it was somewhere in between. But anyway, the the point is, he was he was using he using, using being six five as an excuse for not being fit. Um, and, and the reality is, you've actually got to work harder to stay healthy. And I think that gets that get, that gets lost because it's, you can make teams all the time, but to truly capitalize on your potential, the higher impact forces, yeah. they do it is harder for a big. It is is more difficult for a big person to safely get fit and fast and strong. Because if you do a training mistake or a training error, like you train too much, the forces are magnified, you get more sore, it's, it, things are more difficult. Yeah, every um, sprint is more of a stress on your body than it is for a little guy. Yeah. yeah, so you've got to be on point with your, with your loading and you've got to do all that kind of stuff. But it's not, I mean, LeBron James is 6'8". Yeah, he's managed to be perfectly fit. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, Shaq syndrome. Um, do the opposite, do Delhi syndrome. Yeah, pretend you're, pretend you're like, cultivate your, I can't make it, so I'm going to have to be scrappy and work hard. Delhi syndrome. Imagine if everyone, yeah. imagine that. Maybe if you could just, if you, that was like a, if you could just, uh, like, forget In- taking the, the fast switch fibers out. Inject some Delhi hustle into yeah. every single athlete <laughs> yeah. that gets to the university. Because he's the exact opposite. He probably doesn't belong in the NBA. Basically. He's based on talent, but he wills his way and he just works himself to the bone to be where he is. And he's, he's now an NBA champion. Yeah, just... Words define you know, how awesome it is, yeah. So get get yourself some deli syndrome.